I just want to talk a little bit of history with y'all before we get into game three. I heard through the grapevine that a number one draft pick out there, you know, an MVP award winning player, has put out a campaign in his city to say that the stat sheet stuffer isn't real. Don't believe the hype. Well, I'm going to tell you guys a few things right here, right now. I'm about to go to the Windy City. I'm about to show the former MVP that I am real and that I'm here to go for that award in my rookie season. I don't think these guys are ready for me. Let me give you guys a little few words from the press conference. You guys followed up a huge win last game by dominating again tonight. Is this the kind of performance that can spur the team to a whole new level of play? Yeah, I think there's a lot we can take from another nice win like this. I usually sit down with coach in the film room after each game and see what we can learn from our last performance. And with this game, there'll be a lot of positives to build on. If we can find a way to carry those over to the next game, I'd like to think we can play at this level indefinitely. I want to welcome you guys to episode 7, the breakout game. It's time for me to go for Derrick Rose's head. Let's get into game 3, y'all. Yo, what's going on everybody? I want to welcome you guys to the United Center. I'm out here fooling in Chicago right now. Look at me on a candid camera. <laughs> this is what we doing out here, man. It's time to go ham. But y'all already know how the game go. I'm going to get this rebound real quick. Don't nobody else need to touch this. I'm going to bring this ball all the way down, do what I do. I need to show these guys on my first time with the ball that I can make it happen. So check it out. I'm going in with the hop step layup. I'm making D. Rose get his first foul. And me and my boy Anthony Davis going ham. Now on defense, it's a whole nother story. I'm out here stealing cookies. Out on a fast break. I'm not even looking at nobody else because I'm doing windmill reverses. That's what we doing out here. Check out this Sprite Slam cam. Sometimes these things are just unbearable to watch. Look at Noah. He, he almost slapped me in the face. Where's the flagrant? <laughs> but I know a lot of people had questions about the number one pick and why Anthony Davis didn't go to another team. How many Chris Moore videos have y'all watched? Man, come on. We all know that. If you get drafted at any number, no matter what number it is, the player that was supposed to get picked at that number still goes to that team. They only pick you just because of the simple fact that you have to fight to get a certain draft pick. So, that tells it all. Now, on offense, y'all already know what I'm doing, trying to play my little objectives. But, man, Vasquez, he just don't like passing it to me. So, you know, I had to back out, get my little isolation going. It's a couple seconds left on the clock. So, you already know I'm going to use this nice screen to my advantage. You see me with the leaner, and you know it's cash. Let's get into halftime, y'all. Come on. Now, presented by Sprint. Welcome to 2K Sports. We're in the early stages of what promises to be another great season in the NBA. The Hornets looking good at the midway point. They're off to a good start this season, playing with confidence. The Machine scoring with ease against Chicago. What he's been able to do from the field has been nothing short of spectacular. Only a select few players in the league can shoot the ball like that. And giving it their all, the Chicago Bulls. They're an up-tempo team and the ponies are running. The advantage in fast break points is obvious, no surprise here. Just a ridiculous first half for Carlos Boozer. He's got a dozen points and has been very efficient, converting his shots into points with a nice field goal percentage. And we'll be heading back to the court for the rest of our coverage as we go to Kevin Harlan, Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke for the second half. Yo, that MJ statue was all that. But look, I just want to show you guys one quick play from the third quarter. They barely let me get any burn in this quarter. But check out what I do on defense, man. Check that out. You cannot tell me that that is not a block. This right here is the play where they called the foul on me. And they decided to sub me out. They decided to sub me out. And I'm not going to get no more tick until the fourth quarter. Come on, 2K. Really? So as we get rolling here in the fourth quarter, let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke, for our Sprite Uncontainable Game. Doris? Hi, guys. The Machine has had an uncontainable game tonight. Energy, passion, key plays. He's provided all of them from the bench and done everything you could have asked for a reserve. We'll see what else he can do in the fourth. Great, Doris. Thanks. And when you look at that textbook contribution, guys, coming from one of your reserves. I told y'all I was going to have a breakout game in Chicago. D. Rose ain't want to listen. But it's time to take advantage of Nate Robinson here. We playing defense as a team as Amino gets the cookies. And I'm out on the break with the nice spin cycle. Hold on, did I just dunk over Nate Robinson? 
That should have been a Sprite Slam Dunk Contest dunk right there. Nate Robinson could have been a prop. Am I right? <laughs> Y'all just don't understand, man, how it goes down, boy. When I got the stat sheet stuff at my disposal, the things that this boy can do is just outrageous. Look, as I got Luau Dang with the ankle breaker at half court. And I know I didn't really dunk on Noah, but hey, he was he was right there. He could have jumped at least. <laughs> now, one thing I will say, man, being up big, it helps because all I got to do is come down, get on a fast break. But check out that epic fail for the 360 dunk. I can't believe I did that. The coach can't believe I did that. So the coach takes me out. Brings me back in at the right time. I just want you guys to see something real quick. This is something that any player would be pissed off at if you just got Brandon Knighted. You know what I'm saying? If I check my Wikipedia page tomorrow and it say RIP the stat sheet stuffer, I'm going to be pissed. But we're here on defense right now. I finally got 30 points in a single game. Yes, I'm three games in and I already got 30 points, man. I know I don't got no assists. I know I'm not stat sheet stuffing. But Luau Dang is making a mess out of me right now. But y'all see me out on a fast break, of course. I'm going to try to get Noah real quick. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to sit back, relax. I'm going to wait for Luau Dang, you know what I'm saying? Now, one thing before this last play is over, yes, because of course they are going to sub me out. But Robin Lopez does get the dunk, and I do feel the stat sheet with one assist. But right here, guys, I want you guys to listen to this They Can't Hold Me track by KC, produced by Jalil Beats. If you want to download the full song, the link will be in the description. The music video is coming, man. It's time for me to go to the locker room and check out this player of the game. I'm out, y'all. Double team, triple team, they need they hard squad for me. Ain't nobody hot as me. Ain't nobody stopping me. Double team, triple team. Double beats, holla at me. Whoever want to see me, check the ball. Dare to step up, man, you know you next to fall. I lace them up and you know I'm ready to go. Sit back and enjoy this show. You can't hold me. Hold me, they can't. They can't hold me. They can't hold me, hold me they can't, they can't hold me, hold me they can't, they can't hold me, no they can't, they can't hold me, no they can't, they can't hold me, hold me they can't, they can't hold me, hold me they can't. Your performance tonight, clearly a coming out party. You've made it known now that you'll be around the NBA for a long time. Does that sound about right? <laughs> The hyperbole is strong with you, man, isn't it? I wouldn't be that dramatic about it, but yeah, I feel like tonight was the kind of game I've envisioned myself playing in the NBA for a long time. I'm looking forward to the chance to have many more like it. There's a long road to go, though, so I wouldn't get too far ahead of myself here. I'm just glad I was able to put it all together tonight, truthfully.